Hello, I'm Piers Corbyn of weatheraction.com, long range weather and climate forecasters. Today is the 2nd of September and I, I'm going to tell you about what happened in the summer in uh, Britain and Ireland, Europe and the USA. We're going to talk about our revolutionary breakthroughs in tropical storm forecasting for the USA and then we're going to talk about the state of the climate debate and climate wars and what's going to happen on Climate Fools Day, which is this year, October the 26th. Okay. First of all, on the summer, our forecasts, both in America and in Europe and uh, Britain and Ireland, went extremely well. We uh, predicted the very serious heat waves in America and significantly uh, in uh, August we did state when the big heat waves would end. And others had said they were going to last all the way through August. In fact, they ended when we said, uh, apart from late bits, if you like, uh, to an extent in, in um, uh, Texas, but they ended uh, around the 15th of August when we said, and we think that is a very important forecast because it affected a great number of people. Um, Britain uh, and Europe, Western Europe, uh, have been very wet this summer. Uh, the United Kingdom has been 26% uh, wetter than normal and uh, it's been cool. The coolest uh, uh, UK summer since uh, 1993. Now, we had announced in uh, April, that April the 1st, that it was going to be a cool, wet summer. And around the same time, some other people uh, claiming to be long-range forecasters had said that it could well be the hottest summer ever in the United Kingdom. Now, we said at the time they're talking delusional nonsense. And as you know, they were completely wrong. Now, this is the seventh season uh, of extremes of either summer or winter where the global warming camp and standard meteorology have failed abysmally. It's also the seventh in a row where we have succeeded. And one just has to ask yourself, well, is there anything more to say when you ask a question about is the sun got anything to do with the weather or not? Okay. Um, so, well, I would urge people to take this message to others and say, look, solar activity can be used to predict the weather. Thank you. Action, using our solar lunar action technique, we've made tremendous groundbreaking advances this summer, particularly during August, on the prediction of the formation and track of Atlantic region tropical storms. We, we've made a whole season forecast going right to November of where and when they will form and what tracks they will have. And for the first six formation periods this season, we were right in, those, in respect of those measurements in five out of six of them. Storms formed in, formed in all those periods, and only one was a storm in the wrong place. Sorry. Then the most important storm of the storm season so far uh, loomed, and that was the one which turned into Hurricane Irene. Now, what was named Hurricane Irene formed where we said, when we said, and went on the track we said. And that was predicted 85 days beforehand. Furthermore, when it started moving, like they do, um, we issued corrections to the official forecasts. Um, and we're able to do this, understanding what the sun is going to do. And during the track of Irene, we consistently said, 
Arin will not go and hit land uh, when they said it was going to, but it was going to stay in the sea and track east. What we said about the track of Arin was completely confirmed. It tracked to the east of the official uh, paths, as we said, and in particular, we warned the authorities in uh, NOAA and the National Hurricane Centre and uh, the New York Mayor that Arine was going to stay more out to sea and certainly not track to the uh, west of New York, which would have been very dangerous for onshore winds, but it was likely to go more to the east and in fact basically hit Long Island. So it wouldn't be so bad for New York. We told them that, that is what happened. The New York um, excitement was somewhat over the top because Irene, although it was a very dangerous storm beforehand in the sea, it didn't do the hitting that they expected. And we told them that. Subsequent to that, we've offered to the US authorities uh, our abilities to help them predict storms in order to save lives and money and reduce unnecessary evacuations. So far, we haven't heard back from them. After all, during the uh, very cold December in England, the Mayor of London came up to us and said, look, you predicted all this, that is important. We'll have to make use of you guys in the future and, and uh, generally made most useful things he could to apply the science as available to uh, better mankind. It's unbelievable that the uh, American government uh, seems to be ignoring what we can offer. But anyway, let's just watch this space and see what happens. You can get our full Tropical Storms forecast on weatheraction.com. Thank you. The latest on the climate change debate and climate wars. There's been a lot of important developments uh, this summer. The claims by the warmists have been shown more and more, certainly in Britain and Europe, to be absurd. Um, but there are dangers, and the people that are defending nonsense will go to any lengths to defend their positions, which are backed by huge resources. Now, there have been some very important and interesting findings by uh, scientists, um, Sven Smark and uh, uh, Nigel Calder, for example, recently, where they've been doing measurements about the effect of charged particles on improving the ability of water vapour to form clouds, which nucleate cloud formation. The work they've done on it is claimed that it means that cosmic ray, or others have claimed that the results of this uh, finding or refinding, because it's been known for 50 years, that charged particles nucleate cloud formation. The work they've done on it is claimed that it means that cosmic rays are the key link between the sun and the earth. Um, and that is what's causing things to climb, change in climate-wise, rather than CO2. Now, unfortunately, although charged particles are important, the claims made for cosmic rays are, in fact, complete nonsense. Put very simply, the fact is that there's 300 times more charged particles coming from the sun than come from cosmic rays. But whatever, suppose the cosmic rays themselves were only important for some reason. Because the sun's activity goes in an 11-year cycle, their theory would mean that world temperatures 
if governed by the cloud formation, would also go in an 11-year cycle. But world temperatures do not go in an 11-year cycle. They go in a 22-year magnetic cycle because, so far as particles are concerned, the important ones are the ones from the sun which are channeled to the Earth through magnetic connections. So, whatever they claim about the experiment, and it was done at ground level, not in a cloud, and, and so forth, there's a lot of problems with it. It is true that charged particles are very important in cloud formation, but not true that cosmic rays have any significant effect whatsoever. In fact, they might be important at 0.3%. Okay? Now, the importance for this in the climate debate is that we are now told by the media, oh, there's two theories, there's CO2 and there's cosmic rays. Now, the point is they are both delusional nonsense. And quite soon, the global warmers are going to point out that the co cosmic rays one is in fact delusional nonsense and leave theirs as the truth. Now, of course, you and I know that what actually does work is solar, lunar, magnetic, quite complicated effects. But we can predict the weather with those, whereas all these other theories can predict nothing. So I'd urge you, in discussions, do not fall for this trick. Support objective science. Now... That brings me to, of course, Climate Fools Day. This year, it's on the 26th of November, and it's going to be held in the Parliament buildings, and it's been booked by a number of very helpful members of Parliament. This year, we're going to run through a lot about the costs of climate change policy. We're going to run through the scientific tricks which are played, and we're going to beef up the campaign to end and repeal the Climate Change Act. And we hope there will be some solidarity sort of events around, around the world. Uh, something in Scotland, something in Australia, something in New Zealand maybe. We're going to get those things together. And we urge you to think of things you might do on Climate Fools Day, like write to your MP and ask him where does he stand on the need for accountable science and accountable politics. Um, come along to the meeting. Read about it, talk about it. Yes, so please, support Climate Fools Day, do whatever you can to get the message across and contact your politicians and join the fight for evidence-based science and accountable science and politics. Thank you.